I'll let you lead here because I'm not too sure what exactly the businesses would need to look into if they're wanting to have a bit more of a broad view on legislation, safety yeah, legislation. The whole idea of this presentation is not to scare you. To show you how much legislation there is, the things that we're not familiar with and what could an impact on a business, leading off from safety. I mean, safety has been around for a fair amount of time, but in a reasonable form, uh, funnily enough, not that long. And you see the, the page I've got up in front of you where it refers to a report by Lord Robin in the UK. And that report was a result of many incidents, one in particular, where coal slurry from coal mine that was sort of mounted up, flowed through a town and killed a lot of children that were in a school. I'm pretty sure there's a movie about it as well. In injuring people, killing people, and it obviously impacts on people's, the way they feel towards their workplace and on productivity. I mean, things have to stop and why those things are dealt with. And so they ended up coming up with a report that Lord Broburn did and as a result of that, they decided to ensure their practices were the same and that companies took on the responsibility of themselves as well. Now, that's going back to this report was in 1970 and 1972, so some time ago. And then, as I spoke about it, our first podcast is in Australia, is we ended up with legislation that was based on this report, but different in every state. Okay, there was things that were wildly different to one state to another. So What's when the, the reason um, for that, Bruce? It is a good question that I hadn't thought of until you brought that one up, actually, is uh, you can look at Australia as different countries, the states. Even to the point when I was young, my father, being a Western Australian, worked on a railway line as they built them, big railway lines were going in across Australia, called the Standard Gauge Railway Line. I didn't really know what that meant until later on when I found out that the other side of Australia, the eastern states, had a narrow gauge railway line system. And there was a time, and I can't remember exactly, people might be able to tell me, is I think it was in Adelaide, where freight coming from Western Australia or from the eastern states got to this point and they'd have to move everything over to the next <laughs> railway line to go back. You know, in Western Australia, they had Aussie rules football. Now, I thought that's all that was ever played. And when I moved, my father was a miner and he moved across to Tasmania first, where the main sport over there, funnily enough, was basketball and velodromes at the time, even though there was some other sports played. And then we went to New South Wales and rugby, you know, the two forms that I had no idea of. So, yeah, each state may have, you know, because of the distance, I imagine, different ideology and the different ways the state started. They were very different. So the core was there, but the regularity and consistency between laws was not evident. So if I was a national company, it'd be extraordinarily difficult to comply to all the rules because they would be intrinsically different from one place to another, like the old standard gauge and narrow gauge railway lines. So now, something amazing happened, not being a political person, more you tend to raise your eyebrows every time politics are on TV. But the government at the time, and I believe it had been discussed well before this decision, then nationalised the safety law. And so it's called the Model Workplace Health and Safety Laws, and the cell then had to happen to each individual state for them to adopt. There's still some little differences and things that they prefer or whatever, but in essence, the law's the same in every state apart from Victoria. Victoria is the one that's still yet to adopt it, but we now have national workplace health and safety legislation, which is great. But anybody, the requirement of businesses is to consult in regards to legislation and we can all see legislation this is just the workplace health and safety act you know there's a lot of content there that needs to be absorbed and, I, and look all safety people don't know this back to front too we're always referencing researching and seeing where it jumps so you've got the act as i explained in our first video is what you have to do and then there's the regulation that goes through how you do it and I use that example of emergency procedures, for instance. And so prior to 2011 is where Queensland adopted. I'm using Queensland legislation just for simplicity. There's some idiosyncrasies with Queensland legislation, as I'll show you when we get to building fire safety. But in essence, we're pretty well the same around Australia apart from Victoria. So the regulation tells you how to do it. So ACT tells you what you have to do. So you have to consult. So who do you consult with? I mean, is do we ring the regulator up? Um, yeah, sure, you can ring the regulator up. So 
Uh, all you got to do is get hold of your work safe body in any state and tell them what your difficulty is. The problem is, is that their job is not to write a safe work method statement for you or create your policies or things like that and give you guidance. But it does get confusing when you look at some of the language that happens within the legislation where uh, workers have a legal right to cease work. But what does that mean? You know, so you go to the legislation and explains in the legislative form of what that requirement is. So um, remember, the act is what you have to do, the regulations, how you do it, and the code of practice is for things that are more complex, okay? Now, with the code of practice, you have to do what it says or better. So you can see here all the different codes of practice that to do with electrical safety, excavation, because people dig holes, don't put the right supports in, and people have died from it. So there's, a, there's rules in regards to what you have to do first aid in the workplace okay so these are continually being updated is it bruce i can see they've all got different dates there too that's correct yeah yeah Yeah. so and even if we're looking at this example we've gone from the act to the regulation to codes of practice depending on what you're doing but everybody will has to do the code of practice for facilities that's that one we mentioned in the first podcast so if i just try and find that so the code of practice for facility, managing work environment facilities code of practice, no matter what you're working in, whether it's a tent, a sea container, a multi-storey building, a, a single shop, this goes through all the things that need to happen within that facility. Okay, so if it says you've got need to have a first aid kit, well, then you jump over to the code of practice facilities to see how you comply to those requirements. A lot of people think it's all common sense, you know, but I always have said to people I've taught over the years in previous life when I was in healthcare, there is no sense that's common between humans, you know. So, one, 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 yeah, yeah. So, but in each one of these, they have the duties of the officer, the workers, and uh, refers to all the legislative requirements. So, there are a go to, so you can see the points of legislation where it's been expanded out in the code to guide people in what to do. So, it even mentions workstation, floors and surfaces, lighting, and it just goes on ventilation. You can imagine everything. And as we know, when I was referring to emergency, Agencies, in essence, including fire. We can see the Australian standard is mentioned at the bottom of this code of practice as a guideline. And this is that knowledge and skills that Safety Hut brings to the client's doorstep to be able to help facilitate any of their obligations. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Hut YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. For more in-depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.